Hi, this is Deb, and I'm going to walk you through lab activity number two in module one for scientific validity in advertising. So what you're going to do generally is right here. You're going to locate a product that claims scientific proof that its wonderful powers of effectiveness are supported by this data. Um, so you'll look for a product. It will take you a while. You can't pick the first thing you find because you're going to really want to look to get all your points until you find something that has a link to some scientific data or at least how they set up the experiment to test it. All right, so it'll take a little bit of work and a little bit of, of online investigative powers. So um, you're going to fill out a worksheet that you'll see in a minute with all that information, answer the questions, and when you get that all done about your product, you're going to copy and paste it into a discussion board that everyone can see. The only thing that you're not going to complete is the last question. That last question is your investor's page post. That means you look at everybody's product and by reading their support, what their scientific data was, how it was supported, how the research was done, you're going to decide as an investor, where would you put your money? Where, what product would you invest in and know you get a return on that money? All right. So worksheet to fill out. Next thing. This, you can download it right here and type into it. That's what you want. But I'll just show you this so that you can see the document. All right. So you put your name and your product. And then as you do your research, post, copy and post, paste your websites into here. You don't have to use a, a format, just copy and post the address. At least two, but more is better. All right, let's look at the questions. What specific claims do the manufacturers make about their product? All right, I'm going to show you one right now that I'm looking at. I did my research and found out these people think that you can eat candy and it will prevent tooth decay. Why did I choose this one? Well, it's kind of crazy, first of all, but also there's a little bit of research and, and um, background study on this. And so I get a little bit of scientific method here because really that's why I'm doing this activity. Instead of you just learning about scientific method, I want you to use it and apply it and analyze how these products have used scientific method to prove their effectiveness or not. All right, so back to this guy. This guy says, you eat this candy, you're not going to get cavities, which is kind of crazy, but let's look. All right. They figured out that Streptococcus mutans is the main culprit responsible for tooth decay. So I'm, I'm thinking that you may all have heard about probiotics at this time, um, but probiotics is where good bacteria um, help your body, right? So that's what they're talking about here. Um, this bad guy converts simple sugars found in the mouth into an enamel eroding acid that builds up as a sticky film of plaque and then gets tiny holes called cavities, all right, on your teeth. But there's another bacteria, Lactobacillus parasaceae, I'm sure I didn't pronounce that right, but you get it, uh, prevents the acid from attacking your teeth. And a lot of people take probiotics with different Lactobacillus in it, as a matter of fact, for various things. But um, they found that if they put a dead version of that good bacteria in that candy, um, it helps to capture and neutralize the bad bacteria. So they found lower levels of streptococcus after eating the candy, which could potentially lead to significantly fewer cavities for candy addicts. Okay, what we're talking here is they figured out how many streptococcus, the bad guys, were in the took a sample from their mouth, off their teeth probably, had them eat candy, and then tested again. And they said there were fewer streptococcus. So they make the, the guess, the educated guess, that there would be fewer cavities as a result. All right? So now I know a little bit about this. Now I want to find a little bit more about the research. How did they set it up? And I found, because they told me who created the study, um, so BASF backed, and what group did it? And I found OrganoBalance, a German company. They said a short-term study claims that a lactic acid bacterium holds potential use potential for use in sugar-free candies to reduce the risk of dental uh, uh, cavities. Is what they're really referring to. 
All right, so we figured out what was going on. It was published in the Journal of Probiotics and Antimicrobial Proteins. Remember, I talked about probiotics a little bit. That's what this is. They're telling me how they set it up. Randomized, double blind. That means nobody knows what they're getting. They're all getting the same. It looks the same, but it has different amounts of stuff in it. All right, so they had 60 people and three groups. Each group was instructed to consume either a placebo, that would be our control, they're not getting anything, and that way we know if it, anything changes, it, was, it uh, was that placebo effect, not the result of the uh, whatever the microbe in there that they're working with. And then or in the second group got one milligram of it, and the third group got two milligrams of it. They ate this four times during one and a half consecutive days. All right, let's look at this a minute. They only did this for one and a half days. That's it. Interesting, I would say. And they tested saliva samples from each participant and compared levels of the streptococci. Remember, the one that caused cavities before and after the trial period. What did they find? That these streptococci were significantly lower on the PB candy groups compared to the participants' level before the study. And the placebo stayed the same. All right, that's what we really want to see, that it's the same. But um, even their re research says remarkable, I think they're trying to say it positive here, but after exposure to only five pieces of candy containing one or two milligrams of dead lactobacillus, all right? So that, that raises, that needs more work. That's a little bit, that's not enough research, I'd say. So when I analyze it, I would criticize that. Um, let's see, and, and let's see what the participants said. They said it tasted fine, so there was nothing there. And that you'll see, they put in here where it was published, that lactobacillus, this one microbe, does reduce mutant streptococci. So we have a, a really solid research thing going on there. Now, let's go back here. We have what specific claims. It says if you eat their candy, you're going to get fewer cavities. Um it's important that we know, that have a clear understanding of science as a method of inquiry so that we can decide if this is a valid result or not. That's what we're really looking for. Okay, let's talk about the research design here. Um, in this study, the control group would be the group that got the candy but with no microbes in it because we want to see if just taking, eating the candy made a difference. All right, and we and that's just going to eliminate that and can pull that right out. The experimental groups, there were two of them. They ate candy, but one group had one milligram of the microbes in them, and the second group had two milligrams. So we have two experimental groups. So that experimental variable, same as the independent variable, that we just changed in our experimental groups are, are that they eat the microbe. So that's what's changing. We're give, feeding them this microbe, either one milligram or two milligrams. Then the dependent variable, otherwise known as the responding variable, I kind of prefer experimental and responding. It's less confusing, I have to say. So, the res so experimental, what we change. Responding, what happens as a result of that change. So what's measured? So we measured the number of microbes on their teeth, of the, staph, uh, of the uh, bacteria on their teeth. We took a sample before, they ate the candy. We took a sample after, all right? Control variables. Um, not so much here. Controlled variables could be um, you want to look at uh, the the group if, and make them all the same, so that uh, you know it might be somebody who who has very bad enamel and bad health teeth care and already has a hundred you know like thirteen cavities, and then somebody else doesn't have any cavities, so and it has a really strong enamel that could really mess up your data a little bit. So I didn't see controlled variables happening here. Um, is it an appropriate test of the claims? Well, the kind of problem here is that they only ate a few pieces of candy and then said, yes, that's it. Well, maybe not so much. You'd want to have a follow-up study. You'd want them to have eat this candy for more days than one and a half. You'd want to have a follow-up to see if it really did reduce the number of cavities, all kind of things like that. So purpose of control group is just to make sure that Eating the candy doesn't change. Um, on this, it probably would not have any difference. Um, but 
in some things, like where someone takes a pill. To take a pill, the placebo effect is that they take this pill and it may, they feel better. They feel like they've done something to feel better. And so that's one of the things that comes out with a control group. All right. Uh, we didn't have any real statistically st statistical analysis of that data. It wasn't included, but we had anecdotal. Um, well, they had a little bit. Look back and look and see if there's any. I think there might have been an 80% uh, improvement. So look for any numbers to put in there. And then how would you set it up to make it a valid one? Um, all I would do in this situation is give it a longer term study with more subjects. 60 subjects eating four pieces of candy really wasn't so good. And so figure out how often they should eat the candy, over what period of time, monitor cavity formation, as well as that microbe in their mouths. So, I mean, set it up however you think, and then I'd be ready for my investors page. That's where I would read everyone's. So here's the document. Now, let's pretend, see, I opened it up, and let's pretend I have filled it all out. In my world, uh, which is not a Mac, it, I want to highlight all of that. So, Control-A, I'll highlight it, then I want to copy it, Control-C, and now I have it saved like that, and I want to go to my discussion board. Click to launch. I'm going to create a thread, and I'm going to copy my whole thing in here. So I click inside here, and for me, it's Control-V. And so now I have put in every, all the data that I gathered and wrote down all in there. And I'm going to title it um, Candy Stops Cavities. <laughs> and I think I spelled cavities wrong. All right, and so then once I get it all done, I'm going to submit. At this point, the only thing that I haven't filled out yet is my investor part, the last question. And when I'm all done, I'm going to come back and read everybody's post here. I can get through it to it from the link in the class, or I can just click on discussion board here on the side. And so you see if I click on discussion board in the left menu, it's being very slow, then I can see it there. And I click on that, and I'm in. And so then I can read and see which one I really think is a good product that I would invest in. All right, that's it for this part. If you uh, have any questions, feel free to email me as always, and good luck.